Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 5, first of his name. You know what else is crazy? Bran and Jon Snow are so close to each other, but they haven't seen each other. They're like doing the Under Armour sign to each other. They're like, yeah, two negative ends of a magnet. Huh? Right. Man, we need some Ramsey in this episode, guys. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. We need Ramsey to get on Theon's head some more for what he mm -hmm. did down there at Winterfell, serving justice out there. Nope, he can just keep doing vocals for Fall Out Boy. He does look like that. <laughs> If people write adventure books, do they automatically have to have like an R in their name? Let's go. This season is nuts. Let's go. Ready? Six thousand percent. Grant him courage and protect him in these perilous times. Whoa! Smith, grant him strength that he might bear this heavy burden. May the crone, she that knows the fate of all men, show him the path he must walk. In the light of the seven, I now proclaim Tommen of the House Baratheon. First of his name, first king of the name. Andals and the first men, and lord of the seven kingdoms. I feel bad for him. You shouldn't have to do Long all that. Long may he reign. Long may he reign. Amen to that, for real. I hope this little nug does, reigns for his life. I don't, because I don't like his family, man. I don't like his family, but it's not his fault. He's a little nug. He's going to be a puppet king. I'm nervous for him. <laughs> He's like 13, so he's probably just not even thinking about his... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong for I'm it, sorry, though. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. You're that good. That was too funny. Your grace. But in a way, like, she's kind of, like, lurking, though. Cersei ain't wrong for that. Oh, let's go. There he is. Long may he reign. Long may he reign. He sits the throne like he was born to it. Yes. He wasn't, though, was he? No, he wasn't. You still mourn for Joffrey? He was my husband, my king. He would have been your nightmare. <laughs> your grace, I feel... You knew exactly what he was. I did too. You never love anything in the world the way you love your first child. Doesn't matter what they do. And what he did, it shocked me. Do you think I'm easily shocked? No. Not at all. Things he did shocked me. Who was the last decent king, I wonder? He could be the first man who sits on that throne in 50 years to actually deserve it. It would be some consolation, wouldn't it? For all the horror that put him there. Oh. <laughs> he will need help if he's going to rule well. He has you. A mother is not enough. You're still interested in being queen, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> After it's a job. <laughs> it's literally a job. Shit, it's so flabbergasted, didn't you? Sounds strange, I know, but I am... Um... I haven't even given any thought to it. <laughs> what comes next? It would be a great honor, of course. But I will have to speak to my father about it. Girl scheming. Yes. To speak to your father, I'll speak to mine. We may be faced with an alarming number of weddings soon. <laughs> I, I, won't even know what I don't know if I can handle any more. <laughs> Sister. Or mother. That's so disrespectful. She just lost a child. Murdered at his own wedding. And we've taken the Marinese Navy, Your Grace. The second sons took the Marinese Navy. Who told you to take their Navy? No one. So why did you do it? I heard you liked ships. Then you need a Navy? Yeah, but she don't like to just go out there and take people's How Navy many? ships. Maybe 90 she does. 90, Your Grace. How many men can they carry? 9,300, not counting sailors. Would that be enough to take King's Landing? The Lannisters have more. They've been fighting Joffrey's wars for years. They're tired, dispersed. And now the king is dead. Uh oh. Theory. Theory. Enough, but we're not fighting to make you queen of King's Landing. Ten thousand men can't conquer Westeros. The old houses will flock to our queen when she crosses the narrow sea. The old houses will flock to whichever side they think will win, as they always have. True. There's other news. From Yunkai. Without the Unsullied to enforce your rule, the wise masters have retaken control of the city. They've re-enslaved the freedmen who stayed behind and sworn to take revenge against you. Now the lesson's got to be taught. And in Astapor, the council you installed to rule over the city has been overthrown by a butcher named Cleon, who's declared himself his imperial majesty. Mm-mm. Cleon's got to go. Please leave me. <laughs> Not you, Jorah. 
Jorah gets clout. Let's go, Jorah. <laughs> well, he just dropped a lot of news. Well, he's been there the longest, right? It appears my liberation of Slaver's Bay isn't going quite as planned. <laughs> you could sail for Westeros and leave it all behind. A boy sits on the Iron Throne, a boy many believe to be a bastard with no right to it. How can I rule seven kingdoms? If I can't control Slaver's Bay, why should anyone follow me? You're a Targaryen. You're the mother of dragons. Aw, she doesn't feel worthy Anything of that. Anything more than that. So she's facing some adversity for the first time, really. Mm -hmm. Questioning herself more than that. I will not let those I have freed slide back into chains. I will not sail for Westeros. Well, oh, wow. I will do what queens do. Rule? I will rule. Bro, so she's not going to try to go to Westeros anymore? She's, she's gonna just going to take control of Essos? She's going to try to make her people there at Mirren, I guess, like, she's going to try to rule like a good... Maybe she's just going to, like, because she can't take over Westeros with an army of 10,000, so maybe she's going to build the East into just, like, a powerhouse maybe. itself. Maybe. I think she's just trying to earn her right. Like, she just can't get things handed to her. She's trying to show, like, she needs to be worthy of that. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. And then there's Sleazy Finger over here. Mm-hmm. And um, Sansa's starting to look a lot like Catelyn. But how would they not? You know what kind of stories poor men enjoy the most? One's about rich girls they'll never meet. Is this the only way into the Eyrie? Mountains are impassable. If you want to get to the Eyrie, you need to go through the bloody gate. Doesn't matter how large your army is. First Lords of the Vale didn't have much, but they had these mountains. The fortress they built here has never been overcome, not once in a thousand years. Wow. Know your strengths, use them wisely. One man can be worth 10,000. Ironic you use that number, right? 10,000. Oh, man, yeah, exactly. 10,000. the bloody gate. Or shadowing oh, for Daenerys Bates. in a way? And I don't know. Elaine. Elaine. Stand to. Welcome back, Lord Baelish. They really are to just get one of those little things you get on your hand and put the light on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get one of the veil. That's a walk. You wouldn't need to attack the veil. All you need to do is smother it so they can't grow any food, right? Uncle Peter! Isn't that his stepdad? Why is it Uncle Peter? I have brought you a gift. That's probably just what she tells her son. Lord Baelish. He's very, like, Baelish. protected. Look what Uncle Peter brought me. A beautiful gift for a beautiful boy. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Lady Aaron. My name is Elaine. Oh, do take down that hood, child. Think I'd let my intended leave the Eerie on urgent business without knowing what that business was. I let him go so he could bring you here. To me. My flesh and blood. It's wonderful to meet you, Aunt Lysa. You mustn't call me that in front of anyone else. Oh, of course I understand. No one can know you're here. I would never say a thing. The Lannisters want to destroy us. They've been trying for years. Now they know what it feels like. Mommy said they'd killed your mother and they chopped off your brother's head. Oh my gosh. They did. And my father's. They killed my father's too, with poison. I wanted to make little Lannister baby man fly. <laughs> mother said I could. <laughs> he did too, didn't he? <laughs> Through the moon door. Those were some good times back then. Oh my gosh, she just got you that. <laughs> On top of everything else, they made you marry that filthy troll. <laughs> they did. They made us both. Lord Tyrion didn't want to. I don't believe that for a moment. Aww. Did he force himself on you? No, we never. This is your cousin Sansa, but you're not to call her Sansa in front of anyone but Uncle Peter and myself. Sansa, this is my son Robin. It's a pleasure to meet you, Robin. Hello. Robin, show Sansa to her chamber. It'd be so awkward for someone to just show me to my chamber. It's like putting me in timeout. I know. Oh my god, <laughs> that's disgusting for little finger. What took you? My respect meter just went into the negatives. The ascension of King Tommen the First, extricating Sansa, getting her here alive. She's here. We spent more than enough time in her for one evening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get married tonight. Ought we not? Inform the Lords of the Vale about the ceremony. <sighs> There's only one Lord of the Vale. The others can all hang, lurking and simpering on the stairs like buzzards the moment my husband died, trying to get their claws on me. I do think <laughs> that we could wait until... I'm done waiting, Peter. We had a wedding night many years ago. Don't you remember? Like it was yesterday. What wife would trust you the way I've trusted you? You gave me those drops and told me to pour them into John's wine. My husband's wine. She poisoned him, not the Lannisters. To let it to cat. Telling her it was a Lannister. Little finger. That's some. He started one. like all of this. That's basically. some season one drama. He says, "Shut up." He says, "Shut your mouth. Stop telling the October's everything. You're spoiling it." I know. Faded into nothing. You. Only speaking of it can make it real. What? Sleazy finger. Tonight it is then. 
He's doing that for him, <laughs> though, I feel. Just for the occasion. Once I'm presentable, I'll call on the Septon immediately. He just wants the veil. That's it. But that's not it. I'm going to scream when my husband makes love to me. I'm going to scream so loud. You'll hear me clear across the narrow sea. Oh, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, she really is. <laughs> Sansa's like, the hells I go through. Sansa's like, not Different layers of hells. <laughs> when will the wedding take place in your mind? As soon as decency permits, after we've allowed Tom and the appropriate time to mourn his brother and Marjorie to mourn her husband. A fortnight? No jokes. Two weeks. No jousting. Yeah, we that's know it. that now. That's reasonable. No 77 course meals. And your wedding to Loras? Shortly after Tom and a fortnight. A month for her. I know you don't like them. I didn't like your husband. He used to pat me on the back a lot. <laughs> I didn't trust him. Daniel Cormier. Tommen. You don't need to make yeah. formal alliances with people you trust. Then whom can we trust? Ourselves alone. The Tyrells are our only true rivals in terms of resources, and we need them on our side. Robert wasn't particularly rich. Robert had me funding him. Wars swallow gold like a pit in the earth. I suppose that explains why we did so well in the last one. Do you know how much gold was mined in the Westerlands this past year? Haven't a clue. Go on, your best guess. Pounds, tons, ounces, can't be. Our last working mine ran dry three years ago. Uh-oh. Then how do we pay for anything? The Crown owes the Iron Bank of Brothers a tremendous amount of Everybody money. owes this people. Davos is about to get a loan from them. That'd be interesting if we could see who they were. There must be someone in the Iron Bank you can speak to, come to some arrangement. The Iron Bank is the Iron Bank. There is no someone. But someone does work there. It is combined. Maybe it's the dragons because they like gold. It's comprised of stones. One stone crumbles and another takes its place. And the temple holds its form for a thousand years or more. We all live in its shadow and almost none of us know it. You can't run from them. You can't cheat them. You can't sway them with excuses. They're the IRS. <laughs> you owe money and you don't want to crumble yourself. You pay it back. Investing the Tyrells in the crown will help a great deal in this respect. For the good of the wow. family, I understand that. I'm not sure my brothers do. I know you're building a strong case against Tyrion. And as a mother, that is your right. But as a judge, I cannot discuss the trial with you. I respect that. We don't need to discuss it. The Lannister legacy is the only thing that matters. You started wars to protect this family. You turned your back on Jaime for refusing to contribute to its future. What does Tyrion deserve for lighting that future on fire? She hates you, Tyrion. Absolutely. So that's crazy. So the gold ran dry, and unless they come up with a new form of currency like we eventually did and got off the gold, they're going to be broke for a long time. Because they, they like to spend. from them people that we don't so know. So we're, we're seeing like a power change here. Mm -hmm. The Red Woman, <laughs> Beric Dondarrion, Thoros of Mir, <laughs> Ilin Payne, The Mountain. Would you shut up? <laughs> I can't sleep until I say the names. The names of every fucking person in Westeros. <laughs> Only the ones I'm going to kill. Huh. It's as good a thing as any to keep a person going. Better than most. He's so close to the fire to hate it, you know? My brother. <laughs> He's almost like a poet in a way, though, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Both the name off a list. If you were here right now, what would you do? I'd tell him to shut the fuck up so I can get some sleep. <laughs> Go on, get it over with. The list of doomed men. <laughs> I'm almost done. Only one name left. Go on. The Hound. Is he gonna whisper it? The Hound. Let's go. Dang. She hates you, bro. She said she's gonna put a sword through your eye and out the back of your skull. Yeah, but like, I don't feel like she really means that. A sweet tooth, you know? Really? She's like, I hate my dad. I hate my stepdad. Go straight. Honey cakes, candied almonds, custard. Anything sweet. Cat was the firstborn daughter after all. It was important that she remained desirable so father could arrange a good match for her. And she was starting to get fat. <laughs> my mother, fat. <gasps> she never let me have my pudding until I'd finished all my proper food. This is before she married your father and moved to the north. That's a good the mother move. <laughs> That's just a typical one. <laughs> become hers. Marriage changes people. Like if you're the opposite, like what are you doing? <laughs> right. Why are you doing that? I didn't mean for you to stop. Go on, enjoy them. She's like being too nice. I don't know what's up with her. Yeah, she's shady. Where do you get the lemons? You can't grow them up here. Oh, God, no. Peter had three crates brought all the way from King's Landing. He's so kind. He really cares for you. Think where you'd be without him. In their clutches and trial for murder. I'm, I'm very lucky. He feels responsible for you. Oh, I know he does. I'm so grateful. Why? Why does he feel responsible for you? Oh. 
but I'm I'm half Tully. He loved your family so loved much. Loved your mother? No. That's what you wanted to say. He loves you, Aunt Lysie. He's married your to you. never loved him, never. Cat always went straight for the sweetest thing, the most obvious thing. Your Uncle Brandon, handsome, arrogant, cruel Uncle Brandon. He almost killed Peter in a duel. And your mother loved him anyway. And now, Peter is risking his life to save you. The daughter of a woman who didn't love him. No more than those whores in his brothels. Wow. Has he told you about them? No. Are you pregnant? Oh. What? No, I told you. Lord Tyrion and I What's never... I asking about Tyrion. Oh my gosh. What do you like Peter do with your body? I'm not so... No, I... Your young, pretty body. Nothing. I'm a virgin. Don't lie to me. You're hurting me. He loves you, Aunt Lysa. All he says is that I'm a stupid, I'm a stupid little girl with stupid dreams who never learns, and I'm a terrible liar, so I should always tell the truth nice to not once, not ever. Oh my god. What a psycho, bro. <laughs> it will all be all right. She always uses that phrase about herself. You'll execute that dwarf for murdering the king, and you'll be free to marry Robin. Robin? Lady of the Vale. Your cousin? Yeah, you traded one tyranny for another. At least this girl right here, you can beat her up and throw her out the veil, though. So Littlefinger knew that Tyrion was going to get charged yeah, he for set it. him up. And so that's why, so they can marry, so she can marry Robin? Yeah, but there's something bigger at play here, though. Like, it's, like he's making his way towards the throne, but he's doing it in a way different way. And he's been doing this since day one. We just didn't realize. Wow. He's a lot more complex. He's the one I who thought. made the whole Sorry. thing go down. He started the whole war in the first place. Perhaps you should have stayed with him. Why is he riding that horse so <laughs> It's not going to be a pleasant journey. It could take weeks to get to the wall, depending on the weather. That's a long way off. Well, Lady Sansa's brother's at Castle Black. If I were her, that's where I'd go. Feel free to stop at any point. Never, my lady. I'm your squire. I've made it this far in the world without a squire. Why need one now? All knights have squires, my lady. I'm not a knight. And I'm not a slaver either. I don't own you. I swore an oath, my lady. I am releasing you from that oath. That means you could leave. He said, but I already swore it. <laughs> what do you think will happen if you leave? They'll say I wasn't a very good squire. Oh, he just wants to be a good squire. <laughs> he sucks at horse riding. That's kind of sweet that he's panicking, though. He's worried about her. Right. But that's his gold, remember? Yeah. That's the only form of payment he has. What a beautiful spot to practice, though. I feel like it was from that guy who was using those poetic terms like flow like a river and stuff. I yeah. think she's like remembering him. <laughs> what was his name? Illyrio? Yeah, something like that. From Bravos? Not Illyrio. Wasn't he from Bravos, though? I am from something. Bravos. Yeah, what was his yeah. name? It was something with a I.O. Serio. What the hell are you doing? Practicing. What? Ways to die. No one's gonna kill me. <laughs> Will if you nonce around like that? <laughs> That's no way to fight. It's not fighting. It's water dancing. Dancing? Maybe you ought to put on a dress. <laughs> she didn't like that. Who taught you that shite? The greatest swordsman who ever lived. <laughs> That's what he did. Syria Pharrell. Syria. That's what it was. Lord of the sea Lord of Bravos. Greasy head, little bastard of it. You're all off. <laughs> what do you know about anything? I bet his hair is greasier than Joffrey's cunt. It was not. It was? You dead? Yes. Oh. He was I don't even know he's dead. Merrin Trant. That's why some Merrin's on Merrin Trant. The greatest swordsman who ever lived killed by Merrin fucking Trant. He was outnumbered. <laughs> Any boy whore with a sword could beat three Merrin Trant. Syria didn't have a sword. Or am I just a stick? The greatest swordsman ever lived didn't have a sword. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have a sword. I see what he taught you. Go on, do it for your provocative friend. Dead like all the rest of your friends. <laughs> Dang, she really tried too. Your friend's dead. Maron Trant's not. Cause Trant had armor and a big fucking sword. <laughs> There's some good lessons right there, though, for real. <laughs> she keeps she's, trying, though. <laughs> she's kind of like in fantasy land, and he's just a realist. I know. <laughs> she's out there river dancing or whatever, and he's like, he's like, mm -mm, that's ain't, that ain't going to do it, honey. He's basically saying, fantasize all you want, but you ain't killing me, little girl. I know. What's <laughs> <laughs> he out there writing? He's like, where's your cousins and brothers? <laughs> a poem, actually. May I show you the gardens? Couldn't very well refuse a royal escort. No, you couldn't. Why are you just out there writing Didn't poems, realize. though? It's not a very good one. To be honest, I ain't that surprised. For one of my daughters. You have several, don't you? Eight. Eight? Goodness. Eight daughters. The fit is difficult. <laughs> I named her after my sister, Elia. She's full name. But I can't say it without turning sad. And after I turn sad, I grow angry. Perhaps that's why she's difficult. Gods love their stupid jokes, don't they? 
Which joke is that? You're a Prince of Dawn, a legendary fighter, a brilliant man feared throughout Westeros. Is she gonna convince him not, not like Tyrion? I'm a Lannister. Maybe. Queen for 19 years, daughter of the most powerful man alive. But I could not save my son. What good is power if you cannot protect the ones you love? We can avenge them. Yes, we can avenge them. You really believe Tyrion murdered your son? I know he did. We will have a trial and we will learn the truth. I haven't seen my daughter in over a year. The last time I saw her, she was swimming with two of my girls in the water gardens, laughing in the sun. I want to believe that. I kind of do too. I want to believe she's happy. You have my word. We don't hurt little girls in Dorne. Everywhere in the world, they hurt little girls. Would you bring her a gift for me? I wasn't there for her name day. Don't know when I'll see her again. Anything at all? The best shipwrights in King's Landing have been working on it for months. Marcella loves the open water. I will have it sailed down to some spear for her. Please tell her. My mother misses her very much. I wouldn't get on that ship, though. Right, but I don't know what he's thinking, though. I'm really trying to figure it out. What was his motive? Right there? Well, he's trying to avenge his sister no matter what. Right, that's what I'm thinking, so... So, no matter what, I think he's manipulating. That was a self-serving conversation. Oh, he cooked a rabbit with the skin on. Have you ever cooked a rabbit before? No, my lady. Did you ever cook anything for Lord Tyrion? No, my lady. <laughs> that was the cooks. She's gonna have to teach him the ways. <laughs> What but at least he's loyal. Armor? You can't coach that. Helping you with your armor. I've been removing my own armor for quite some time. Thank you very much. What exactly did you do for Lord Turin? Brought him his meals and cleared his table when he was finished. Mostly I poured wine. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst in Lord Turin's service, did you ever do anything remotely related to combat? I killed a man. <laughs> Who? King's guard. He tried to kill Lord Tyrion at the Blackboard. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot too. Yeah. How did you kill a King's guard? I've pushed the spear through the back of his head. Bloody ridiculous. <laughs> help me with these straps. Oh, she didn't need help. Oh, he was happy she <laughs> needed help. <laughs> At least he knows how to do that, I guess. Oh, yeah, they got brand now, don't they? Yeah, we're back to the cringe house. Keep quiet. Isn't he on a mission with John? Yeah, I was wondering where he was. Oh, is Locke going to try to kill Bran? I don't know. You need water. It doesn't matter. Of course, it matters. You mustn't let anything stop you. You already have stopped me. We're far from here. What does that mean? Whoa. Bro, what is going on? At the hill. A great wheelwood tree. You've seen it too. Mira and I, even Hodor, we're only here to guide you. We have to find it. In your words, what do you want about me? You have to make it. We will. This isn't the end. Not for you. How will we know the end? You'll know. What? We watching the X-Men right now? He would have won Survivor. Yeah. He would have won that fire making contest. Yeah. <laughs> Brothers. He's like, you know those wargs you keep hearing about? One of those dangerous wargs. Move quiet. How many? Eleven men. No guards posted. They don't seem to have a care in the world. We'll carve them up like walnut pie. <laughs> Carl was the top paid cutthroat in Flea Bottom. He was a legend, he says. There's a hut on the west side of the keep. We should steer clear of it. Why? There were some hounds chained up inside. Closer we can get without the dog sniffing us the best. Uh-uh, Brand's in there. Liar. Well, tonight. Get some rest. We move at sundown. So yeah, the universe really just does not oh, want John to come in contact with Brand. Mm-mm. Oh, jeez. Got some Brand hounds in there. You're gonna trust them. Hodor, Hodor, Why can't Brian like turn into Hodor and whoop please, his butt? Please get off her! Hodor, Hodor! Because he's tied up. Please leave her alone! You left your daddy's castle looking for trouble, didn't you? If you let my sister go, I can help you. What's the play here? Why are you gonna do that? I have the sight. I can see things. And then that's very helpful. Because <laughs> it haven't happened yet. That's a fine thing. You don't believe it, I bet. I wouldn't either. Have you seen what they're going to do to your sister? Don't close your eyes. I saw you die tonight. I saw your body burn. I saw the snow fall and bury your bones. Hey, he ain't lying. Let's go. Let's go. It's about time, man, because they can't slide like this. Right. They broke their oaths. Mutineers. I don't trust Locke, man. What's... He might stab one of them real quick. He's here, lads. Is John with you? Hi. <laughs> Take you to him. Mm -mm. You're Brandon Stark. Hold on. Little crippled lord. You're going for a ride, boy. John! He cut his leg. Yeah, he oh my you. god. And I'll cut your friend's throats. Oh my god. Get your hair. 
Oh boy, my boy, was it? No, 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 no. I thought that's who it was. Yeah, me too. Oh, he's working. He did Let's work go. in the whole door. Okay, okay. Break the chains. Stevie Nicks that thing. Let's go. Listen to the wind blow. I was waiting for this to become really useful, you know? Let's go, John. Okay. Oh, snap. No way. That's the end of that man. Oh, no. Hodor didn't want to do that. Cut me loose, Hodor. Or he's like super confused. Yes, he having like a. Oh no! Like don't hurt Brand though. Josian, Mira, free them. Go. Good job, Hodor. Good job, Brand. Please see John. <gasps> Please see John. Oh, we can't get there because he's got to crawl, bro. Man, this is leave him alone right now. He's busy. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't interfere with that. If he sees you, he won't let you go north. He's my brother and wants to protect you. I'll take you back to Castle Black. Oh. You have to decide. Do you want to find the three-eyed raven? I mean, John's just out there whooping ass, and he's like, man. I, have to, I know, it's making me so sad. Yeah, because he might walk away and not even see him again. We need to free Summer, and we need to go. Dang, he's not even going to see him. That's heavy. Oh, let's go. Lord Snow. Lord Snow. We're back for trial. <laughs> <laughs> we were free men. You'll never be free. Oh, he's talking junk to him. Yeah, because he was the best. He was a legend in Janelli. Some old man teach you how to stand. Come on, John. Finish him. You know what's wrong with honor? Ugh. Cheap. <gasps> Whoa, Gilly did it. That's not Gilly. Oh, dude, I'm tripping. That ain't Gilly. That's just one of the wives. Sorry, I saw her and immediately thought Gilly. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. Wow, John. <laughs> I said Gilly did it. <laughs> I said, where'd she come from? I thought Sam done pulled up she again. she like a wildling? Right. I thought they done heard the commotion, ran up. Let's go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just walk outside and see that real quick. I count 10 dead mutinies. Mark said there were 11 of them. Where's Rust? Oh, he's in the woods doing something. I was thinking I didn't see him die, but I didn't want to mess up again. Oh. Ghost. That's what you get for dumping out his water last episode. Yeah, you better get in that cage and close it. <laughs> that happened quick, too. Oh my god, they put, they did the spikes? Ghost is a brother of the Night's Watch, too. <laughs> and people get mad when we call him dogs. Right. It's not safe for you here on your own. Mance Raider has an army heading this way, and there's worse out there than Mance. Come with us to Castle Black. We can find your work. Keep you safe. They're shady. all respect Sir Crow. Craster beat us. And worse. Your brother Crow's beat us, and worse. Find our own way. You want to stay here? And Craster's keep. Burn it to the ground. And all the dead with it. First lands. That looks satanic. Yeah, it does. They're gonna have to go build a whole new house now. Yeah, I don't think I would care either. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'd, that, I'd, you know? I'd have to get out of there. <laughs> That's crazy that burning your house feels freer <laughs> in the cold, you know? Well, you know how much blood's been spilled in that living room? Right. I wouldn't even feel like cleaning all that. I'd just burn it down too. You kind of had a nice spot though out in the woods, ain't gonna lie. Crazy episode, man. Unreal. All right, guys, that was verse of his name, babe. What do you think about this episode? I thought just like, wow, well, there's crazy. Season four is insane. Every episode is just like, there's so many twists, so many turns. Everything it's hard to react to it because every single thing that's happening is important. Absolutely. You know, the craziest thing we figured out in this episode, guys, was dude, Shady Finger had his had his had his fingers in it from the beginning, man. We thought that this was we were basically told that we it was all about Cersei. And so we're sitting there looking at Cersei and Jamie like you guys are the worst. And they are. They're gross, right? Dude. They didn't kill Finger, John Aaron. Littlefinger set that whole thing up. He manipulated it from the jump. And it was all just a misunderstanding. And he has been pulling the strings from the shadows. He's been pulling strings from the shadows for a long time. So um, I guess it was, all started when he tried to marry Catelyn. He wanted to marry Catelyn Stark, but Catelyn was married to Brandon. They dueled. And like since that moment, since he like lived, 
He like has just been a shady little man doing shady things. I guess he was ultimately humiliated. And then they even made it a point to talk about how even after he was humiliated like that and he confessed her love for Catelyn, like not just like the love in the sense of like, let me marry you for power, but like actual love, which seems to be rare in this world to say the least, right? And it's his motivation. It, it humiliated him. Yeah. So that was a huge revelation. That was another big revelation in the show. What was it? Tommen's finally king. We know that much. Um, Khaleesi's not going to Westeros. She's going to stay in rule. Yeah, so Tommen, yeah, like you said, Tommen, uh, Tommen got, Tommen got put up for King quick, man. Like I said, that just happens so fast in the show. I know the timeline jumps. And, and he's going to get married in two weeks, and I don't know when Tyrion's trial is, but it's soon, so this is all moving very fast. Very fast. And then Cersei's got to get married soon, even though she really doesn't want to. That whole thing's crazy. And then another thing that is insane is how it seems like Daenerys Targaryen has set her sights on a different goal. Mm -hmm. So I think that she really realized that conquering Westeros isn't going to be as easy as let's march an army across the sea and go take over King's Landing. I mean, that would hold for a while maybe potentially but that would cause so much trouble and tyranny and war that i feel like by the right. time she actually conquered the kingdom there would be so much bloodshed that they would never support her cause i feel like you know? they would just be like when she pulled up they'd be like uh who are you <laughs> yeah like, like yeah. who are you like you see all this going on who are you yeah because they don't have all the well they don't even have a press in the show that's another thing we were talking about outside of uh outside of youtube was like in this show it's obviously like a dictatorship by the king so there's no like free press if there was like a media and a press and if they were like you know what i'm saying sending out newspapers and stuff mm. it would make the show so different but you know i'm kind of glad that they're not yeah, they, obviously so they can't do that because like the king controls that but they've already addressed that in this by show cutting tongues out. they cut out tongues yeah. exactly so, so they kind of like anytime you have that like as like you know right uh, as like an argument you can't because yeah anytime your yeah exactly your tongue will get cut out we also learned that we also see like the lannisters are kind of coming to like some issues here because not only exactly, are they they have in the they have they're having the trial with Tyrion, but also um cersei and tywin had an exchange where uh the iron bank might need to be called because we've been dry in our mining our gold mining for right. three years now and you don't know that because I haven't told you. So now I'm telling you that we might have to do something that is seems to be bad. Well, it's very interesting, though, because the pair, the thing that I'm really taking away from that is the Lannisters have a problem. They have an identity crisis now. So their whole entire identity is the Lannister always pays their debts, blah, blah, blah. We're rich, yada, yada, yada. But see, now they're not their currency is not going to be able to be backed by gold anymore because all the wells ran dry. <gasps> Wait a minute. Remember when Tyrion was looking through the ledgers? Because Littlefinger was the master of coin before Tyrion. Mm -hmm. And all Tyrion saw was borrowing from this bank. Because because Littlefinger so, has been sitting there wasting their money, probably. He's so been he doing probably everything did in his power that to, to them on purpose. The yeah, he did that on purpose. Yeah, exactly. He's been weakening everyone behind the scenes in every type of way. Wow, like, I the just more put we, that together. That's what I'm saying. The more we go through the show, he, the more you're going to realize Littlefinger is like the ultimate douche. I just thought he was a, annoying. You know what guys, I'm saying? I, got, I got chills, guys. He I got was chills. just annoying. Oh my to gosh! Me. And now he's just a mastermind. Dude. It's Grody Finger, guys. No, he's worse than Tywin. Yeah, and then, but something that's crazy is, see, there's this, there's this thing, right? And I'm sure you guys heard of it. I just can't think of the name, but like, you know, when you're, like, when you're poor, right? Like, trust me, dude. Like, I get it, man. Trust me. Like, when I'm really poor, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I'm in my poor times. Yo, like when I go to the grocery store and I get something, it feels like a luxury in a way. Mm -hmm. But then when you got a little money on you, it goes. So basically, the Lannisters are going to have like a standard of living issue. They're used to having such a high standard of living. All their all their kings, all their children, all their family members are petulant. Their children, they're spoiled. Um, Even they're during rotten. times. They seem to live, a lot of them seem to live in like a fantasy land in a way, right? And I feel like what's really scary is going forward in the show, you know, now it's the time of spending money's over. Now it's going to be the time of like working to pay off debts 24-7. Mm -hmm. So there's just about to be a tide change. Just like man. all the aftermath of Robert, I feel like. 17 years of just like, he never went to the council meeting. So there was just like, that's why Littlefinger got that ability because Robert never went to the to the meeting so it was Renly, Littlefinger, and Varys and like they were basically ruling the kingdom right man yeah this is some this is some MK Ultra level business right here guys I'm talking we infiltrated so this kingdom was infiltrated years ago right right I mean people has been setting up plans to overthrow this this dynasty or this this power structure 
And, you know, obviously they can't just do it through violence. They can't do it through necessarily persuasion. Man, so they've done it in the shadows. They've done it internally for years. And they play, and, and Littlefinger's playing the long game. He embodies the word, the term Game of Thrones. Like when that lady was talking, that lady was talking too much and her gears started moving in her head, right? And she started putting things together and talking. And so what did Littlefinger do? Kissed her. Yeah, he straight put his tongue in her mouth. And like, dude, that might not seem like a big deal, but if you've ever, like, could you imagine some lady that like you're not into at all and she's sitting there talking and so the only way you can manipulate her to play your game is to just stick your tongue in her mouth? But like, she's powerful. She's more powerful than you. And that's still what he did and it worked. Yeah, I know, but. That's all he needed? Ugh. Ugh, yeah, man. Uh, Littlefinger is playing the game, bro, is, what, uh, is, all I, is all I'm really getting away from this. And then, I don't know how I'm feeling about Marjorie, bro. Like, she's just, you know what I'm saying? She is a king she, hopper. She's being sneaky, though. She's acting like, I never thought about it. I never thought we should get married. Much but I, I know about Sir Pounce. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know about Sir Pounce. Right. How else would I know? Tell me that. And then I think another very interesting, well, let's not get off that yet. I just feel like, but the jury is out on her to me, though. Because right. the thing is, she doesn't seem like a shitty person. Right. She, she doesn't. Seems, she seems like she wants to be a queen, but when she's in queen positions, they're phenomenal. She's doing the right thing. Like they're they're maybe she's doing the wrong thing to get to be queen, but when she is a queen, she's like doing things that are like noble and like positive. Like there's nothing bad about going to help out like poor people. There's this there's this mystery to her. It's like right. you seem great. And it's like, I want you to be queen because in a sense, like, even though we all know you're just queen hungry and you don't really care about any of this, you just really want, like, you just have like a personal lust for that, right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. I mean, if you're gonna do the right thing, like who cares what your motivations are, right? right? You know, internally your motivations could be anything, right? But my point is she scares me because of the fact that she is so, she's so hard to read that maybe when she does get into power, like who knows who she becomes. But, you know but at the same time, I'm just not getting that I feel vibe. like I'm Marjorie's just, just a vessel because I feel like the real power person in Marjorie's house is the grandma. Well, obviously, I mean, I know what you guys are going to say. Well, you got to understand from Marjorie's perspective, she probably grew up being told that like, you know, your job is to marry this person. And, you know, like she she understands all those princesses. Pressures. Think Everyone that has that. Up. Exactly. Yeah, it's right. Like, it's like that's your job. Even you even heard. Um, well, not just your job. That's your duty. Well, you like, that's what Liza makes you a Aaron, good person. She said even Liza Aaron was like, we can't eat, eat too many sweets because then we'll be a bad wife. Everyone like, has a particular idea of what their position is supposed to be in this world. And society says, like, like Padraig said, was that his name? The Squire? The Squire, right. Yeah. Okay, Padraig, right. Um, Podrick said, well, if I don't, she's like, okay, I'll release you from your vow, bro. Like, go chill, like, go home. And he's like, no, because then they'll say I'm a bad squire. So, like, really all that matters is, like, did you fulfill your duty? Right. Obviously. I mean, we've made that point a thousand times. All right, enough talking. Let's get into right, the next duties. One. Hey, wait, wait. One more thing that was huge. Daenerys. Wait, do we already have... Do, that she's not going to Westeros? Guys, there was something huge in this. I wanted to make a statement about Sansa. Sansa made... Uh, that at the beginning of the season, that's why you should go back and watch the beginning. I was on Sansa's head. I'm really starting to like her character. You know, she's past the whole let's go be with Joffrey thing. I mean, we're past that, right? But I'm talking about the young lady who portrays Sansa like as an mm -hmm. actress. Dude, she made a very, very, very powerful facial expression. Her face said, "Her face said, I went from a prisoner to a prisoner, and and it just said it all, man. You guys know what I'm right. trying to say. That acting right there was really yeah, good. Yeah, she's, she's great. She's like, killing it. Absolutely." And Love her, that scene. her character, it's just I seem like it seems like in season four, she's going to have to have like either like a turning point or something pretty soon or like some type of redemption in her character, because it just seems like she's just getting tossed around. Yeah, yeah so she's she's like being blown by the wayside. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Someone's got to give with her. And I feel like she's going to make some strong, powerful move at some point. You know, if she was, you know what I could see? Mm. And this is just a stretch, right? Because see, we just discovered that Littlefinger's pulling the strings, right? Right. Well, so he's a bad guy. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, she's a good guy, Sansa. Yeah. Right. So maybe Sansa can find a way to learn from Littlefinger, learn his tricks, and then use them against him. Right. Like, like you know what she I'm saying? Could she could be the one to manipulate him finally, because it seems like he's on top of everything. Like if like he just is like I, I I'm really underestimated that guy. Like I don't even know what that means, right? Like use him to do like to do what? I don't know. I mean, I'd have to think about it. But you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just generally speaking, because man, he's definitely... general. He says he wants everything. We're general with what he wants so we don't know yeah she could generally just try to manipulate to figure out what he wants more so that way we could all figure it out right maybe by the end of the show we'll know maybe at the end it's just gonna be like little finger with freaking two swords just walking in like final that's boss. what that episode was though little finger is like the sneakiest he can rule and not even lift a finger man that's yeah. why he's probably called little finger because he don't have to lift them 
He's probably got they're little weak. fingers because they're weak. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You don't be lifting them. Oh my gosh, guys! Thanks for listening to his blabber and stuff. Obviously, that uh, was an insane episode. I can't wait. That was one of the best episodes I've seen. That was engaging. Yeah. That was definitely engaging. The laws of gods and men. Is that her? Is there like squids on it? Nope. It's just, just a Stannis. Oh yeah, they're gonna go try to hire the cell swords. Oh yeah, I love the rebrand. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, so you really got a sail between his legs like that? Would See? you look up? Cut off. Would you look up? Heck no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> You're gross. You're so childish. If you'd like to sit, I'm sure that... We've been here since midday. I got there fast. Easterners have a different sense of time I've often found. Once, I was waiting for Salador's son here in Bravos. Together, we were going to run three shiploads of the finest... Wait, they're in Essos right now? They're at Bravos. Yeah, that is in Essos. I don't know if that's in Essos. I don't really don't know. I just know it's in Bravos. But is yeah. They said Easterners. Yeah, they did. Y'all y'all practice that. Welcome to the Iron Bank. What can we do for you, Lord Stannis? This is Stannis of the House Baratheon, King of the Andals and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. He's heard it all before. The Iron Throne is currently occupied by Tommen, the House Baratheon, King of the Andals and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. He shares no blood with me. He is a bastard, born of incest, as was his brother before him. Yes, we have heard this story. <laughs> it's not a story. It's the truth. A story about a jealous uncle whose attempts to usurp the throne from the rightful king cost the Seven Kingdoms dearly in blood and gold. Propaganda. Gold in mm -hmm. You feel your blood gives you a claim on our gold. More than any man living. Across the narrow sea, your books are filled with words like usurper and madman <laughs> and blood right. Here, our books are filled with numbers. They prefer the stories they tell. <laughs> More plain, open to <laughs> How many fighting men remain loyal to you? 4,000. And how many ships do you have? 32. And how much wheat and barley and beef and pork do you produce on Dragonstone? None. You can see why these numbers seem unlikely to add up to a happy ending. Right, they don't want to give you a loan and you, you can't pay it back. Right, because you want to go get blasted. respectfully decline your request. But we thank you for paying us the honor of your visit. Then you only got a guarantor or nothing? In Bravos, thieves are not rewarded with titles. Well, strictly speaking, I didn't do the thieving. That would be the pirates. I just moved what they stole from one place to another. Oh. This <laughs> is the payment that was demanded by King Stannis for my crimes. I consider it an honest accounting. He's an honest man, and he's your best chance to get back the money you've sunk into Westeros. Which is a lot, I imagine. Wars are expensive. The war is over. As long as Stannis lives, the war is not over. Who's the real power in King's Why did they just kill him real quick? Sit down. Uh, humor me. Tywin Lannister. How old is Tywin Lannister? 67. 67, and when he dies, who's in command? A half-grown boy, the product of incest. Cersei Lannister, a queen whose people despise her. Jaime Lannister, a man best known for killing the king he was sworn to protect. Bad rep. <laughs> Tywin's gone, who do you back? That is a problem for another time. Begging your pardon, I think it's a problem for now. There's only one reliable leader left in Westeros. Stannis. He's got the birthright. He's in his prime. He's a tried and tested battle commander, and he doesn't just talk about paying people back, he does it. Okay, I like that. Look out, see the pirates. Still not that convincing, though. No time, I'm afraid. We sail at sunrise. We. You, me, we. <laughs> Once I thought this man loved me. Now I know he despises me. <laughs> he wants to see me die poor and alone on some cold. Did he get the loan? Oh my god. <laughs> You won't be alone. I don't even know what that's worth. I just I get excited. That's a big old zip zipper thing of gold. How much them shillings worth, guys? I know. Do y'all got change for that? If I go get something to eat. For the good stuff left back in your house. I gave it to your wife. <laughs> You're not my friend, my friend. I'll see you at sunrise. I give you until the full moon to order there she goes. all the ironborn scum out of the north and back to those shit-stained rocks you call home. Oh, she's reading the note. <laughs> Do you think Bolton? Vladimir knows about this. About her coming? Yeah. <gasps> oh. Dude, I'm hyped for this. Let's go. Oh, good. What if she puts him up on that thing? And the what if Theon tortures him on that? Oh, let's go. Theon Greyjoy. I, I don't know. I'm here for Theon Greyjoy. Take me to the dungeons. Not in the dungeons. Aww. A reek sleeps in a cell. They treat him like a pet. 
Not Kate in the right. Thank you. Oh. Doesn't Theon think his family betrayed him, though, to send him that there? Or something like something that? Something like that, yeah. We're going home. So he might be scared. Oh! Of her? Maybe. No, he's about to hop in her arms. Oh, he's backing right. up from her. He just screamed no. You can't trick me. Tell him. Tell him you couldn't trick me. I'm not tricking you, Theon. Oh, he I'm thinks Ramsey's tricking him. Bro, I'm about to be done with you, Theon. I swear to God, bro. He's scared. Oh, man. He really doesn't know what to believe because he's been so tortured. Yeah, he's scared that if he goes. Oh, no. Look at him with blood everywhere. There's that freaky. No, he, or he's been in war. He's been in war. Oh, I thought it was that girl scratching he's his ass. Turning into a lovely evening. <gasps> Why can he fight good? Dion. Is she gonna die in there? <laughs> Dion. What the heck? That is honestly really sad. That reminds me of that one time I tried to save my chipmunk. Uh, I started to save a chip after my cat and it bit me. Give me my brother. I know more of your men will die. You've got bigger balls than he ever did. But with those big balls of yours, how fast can you run? Oh, he's letting the doggies out. They're retreating? Oh my Make god. Now. Your brother. My brother's dead. Oh no. Punk ass Theon. Oh my god. He didn't even have enough courage to rescue himself. I don't know if it was courage, babe. I really like feel like he has I been absolutely so. tortured. You know what? When he tortured them two little boys and burned them up, he should have thought about all that. I guess he wasn't about it. He wasn't. Those creatures who came in the night, they wanted to take you away. And you didn't let them. Oh, you he knows he made a Lord. mistake. I didn't want them to take me. I was so scared. I didn't yes. want them. Yes. Great. Oh no. I feel like he's gonna drown him or something. Remove those rags. It's a lot of cuts, man. Because they've been torturing the crap out of him. The bridges too, Reek. Take them off. <laughs> the bridges. <laughs> That's <laughs> your face. That's like all my britches. He still just gets so much satisfaction out of that. How rude. He gave him a bath. That's his like reward for real. What the heck? Do you love me, Rick? Bro, you strange. <laughs> you just made it awkward up in here. He has to say yes. Yes, of course, my lord. Because I need you to do something for me. Something very important. There's a castle, you see. Some bad men hold this castle. I need your help to take this castle back. I need you to play a role. To pretend to be someone you're not. You better not take him out of this mindset. Pretend to be who? Theon Greyjoy. He's going to use him as Theon. Maybe that's just the show's way of getting this annoying ass character off the screen. Because I'm tired of seeing him like this. Just like spineless as mess though. It makes me so sad because he, you saw how tortured Yeah, that's what I'm tired been. of seeing him because like, he's tortured. Yeah, but I don't feel bad for him. He deserves it. He deserves well, to have his sucks. toes yeah, cut off. Yeah, but dang, that sucks too. I mean, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't condone torture. I'd rather just see his head cut off. Oh my gosh. They got huge, dude. They can fly like that now? Oh, okay. you guys. Lamb chops. That was kind of nuts. That I don't think Khaleesi huge. ordered that. He is a goat herd. He says he prayed for your victory against the slave masters. I thank him for his prayers. <laughs> It was your dragons, he says. They came this morning for his flock. He hopes he has not offended your grace, but now he has nothing. Tell this man I am sorry for his hardship. I cannot bring back his goats, but I will see he has paid their value three times over. Beautiful sentiment, Khaleesi. You can't do that forever, though, but beautiful sentiment. Oh, <laughs> he hot tilted it out of there. Send the next one in. Is he a master with his outfit? It looks like it, right? Queen Daenerys, 
tales of your beauty were not exaggerated. I thank you. Mine is one of the oldest and proudest families in Meereen. Then it is my honor to receive you. My father, one of Meereen's most respected and beloved citizens, oversaw the restoration and maintenance of its greatest landmarks, this pyramid included. For that, he has my gratitude. I should be honored to meet him. You crucified him. I pray you will never live to see a member of your family treated so cruelly. My father spoke out against crucifying those children. Is it justice to answer one crime with another? My treatment of the masters was no crime. You'd be wise to remember that. What's done is done. You are the queen, and I am a servant of Marinus. And what traditions do you speak of? Proper burial in the Temple of the Graces. My father and 162 noble Miranese are still nailed to those posts, carrying for vultures. Were they going to bury the kids? I forgot. Were they going to do that or they, were they going to leave them up there? They were going to leave them up there. Okay. The buried them. My bad. I, I was just forgetting. Your Grace, I ask that you order these men taken down so that they might receive proper burials. And what of the slave children these noble Miranese crucified? Would you have begged me for their right to a proper burial? I cannot defend the actions of the masters. I can only speak to you as a son who loved his father. Let me take his body down. Let me have him brought to the temple and buried with dignity so that he might find peace in the next world. Bury your father, Stardust Ololak. Thank you, my queen. Okay, so she has an empathy bone. How many more? There are 212 supplicants waiting, your grace. Oh, no. 212. Probably all their families, huh? And then some. Send the next one. Every single person is just going to blame the other guy. They did it. They did it. No, they did it. I didn't want to do it. They did it. <laughs> so shall we begin? Why is Cersei there? The a coward and a traitor. My birds tell me the hound slaughtered five of our soldiers. I believe the phrase, fuck the king, was uttered. But the old king, king though. To make the common soldier stupid enough to try his luck with the hound. <laughs> Silver stag seems a generous bounty. Make it a hundred. More whispers from the east, my lord. The Targaryen girl. Daenerys has taken up residence in Meereen. She has conquered the city and rules as its queen. Conquered with what? She commands an army of unsullied, my queen, some 8,000 strong. She has a company of sellswords, the second sons. She has two knights advising her, Jorah Mormont oh. and Barristan Selmy. Yeah, and thanks to Joffrey. Baby dragons. Baby dragons. Larger every year, your grace. Mormont is spying on her for us. No longer he appears to be fully devoted to her. As for Sibera, I like when they just say it for the simple folks like me. Mm -hmm. Dismissal from the king's guard a bit harder than anticipated. Cersei did it. To protect him. Cersei did it. Fit to protect myself. Joffrey didn't die on his watch. Dismissing him was as insulting as it was stupid. Don't tell me you're worried about a child halfway across the world. A child with two seasoned warriors counseling her and a powerful army at her back, your grace. Lord Varys is right. I have been to Essos and seen the Unsullied firsthand. They are very impressive on the battlefield, less so in the bedroom. <laughs> Dragons haven't won a war in 300 years. She must be dealt with. By force? Eventually, if it comes to that. And your little birds find their way into Meereen. Lord Tyrell, be a good man. Fetch my quill and paper. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yes, sir. He's been disrespected twice. And he didn't even care. All He's right. too stupid. <laughs> Elena said he was dumb. The most uncomfortable looking chair in the Seven Kingdoms right there. And so, Baron? Lord Varys. I'm not actually a noble man. No one is under obligation to call me Lord. And yet everyone does. You seem quite knowledgeable about the Unsullied. Did you spend much time in Aesos? Five years. Most of us live and die in the same corner where we were born and never get to see any of it. I don't want to be most of us. Most of us aren't princes. You are from Aesos. Where? Lise. <laughs> I have a new for accents. I've lost my accent entirely. <laughs> How did you get here? It's a long story. One you don't like telling people. People I trust. My paramour, Eladia, she would find you very interesting. You should come to the brothel and meet her. We brought our own wine. Not this will they serve here. Everybody is interested in something. Not me. When I see what desire does to people, what it's done to this country, I am very glad to have no part in it. Oh, so he's on that, like, Buddhist stuff. The absence of desire leaves one free to pursue other things. Such as? More desires, right? Oh, like an obsession? I'm confused because he said he didn't have desires, but he has desires, so we'll see. I've been pardoned. He didn't really think that, right? No, he's being a smart ass. <laughs> That's Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> really? They chained him up for what? We mustn't disappoint father. He looks so mad. 
<laughs> Jamie's like, Jamie's like, which one? <laughs> like by habit. Remember you, in the last episode they said King Slayer Brothers. <laughs> yeah. What are we, the King Slayer Brothers? Tommen knows what to say. <laughs> I, Tommen of the House Baratheon, first of my name, King of the Andals and the First Men, and Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, do hereby recuse myself from this trial. Straight up. Tywin of the House Lannister, Hand of the King, and Protector of the Realm, will sit as judge in my stead. With him, Prince Oberyn of the House Martell, and Lord Mace of the House Tyrell. And if found guilty, may the gods punish the accused. He probably thinks he did it. He kind of looked like Joffrey right there, didn't he? I'm very interested to know what does Tywin believe happened. Right. You know? I think he knows the truth, honestly. I really do. I think he knows it wasn't him. Tyrion of the House Lannister, you stand accused by the Queen Regent of Regicide. Did you kill King Joffrey? No. Did your wife, the Lady Sansa? Not that I know of. How would you say he died then? Choked on his pigeon pie. So you would blame the bakers? All the pigeons just leave me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Crown may call its first witness. He slapped the king across the face and called him a vicious idiot and a fool. Right here in this throne room, he marched up those steps and called our king a halfwit, compared his grace to the mad king and suggested he'd meet the same fate. When I spoke in the king's defense, he threatened to have me killed. Oh, why don't you- He kinda did, though. Yeah. He's doing. Pointing Silence. a loaded crossbow at Sansa Stark while you tore out her clothes and beat her. I know. You will not speak unless called upon. Yes, Judge Tywin. Dismiss the merit. Basilisk venom. Oh my god. blood. Uh, wolf's bane. Has Tyrion made enemies? Yeah, he did. <laughs> of nightshade. Tears of lease, demons dance. There's probably so many conversations between Littlefinger and Tyrion that I forgot about where Littlefinger is like setting them up to be point. awful to people. Right. You have a lot of poison in your store. Had Prince Oberyn, my stores were plundered. By whom? By the accused Tyrion Lannister after he had me wrongfully imprisoned. <laughs> <laughs> you examined King Joffrey's corpse. Was it without question poison that killed him? Without question. This was found on the body of Dantas Hollard, the king's fool. He was last seen spiriting Sansa Stark, the wife of the accused, away from the feast. She wore this necklace the day of the wedding. That's some good detective work, though. Residue of the most I sell. rare and terrible poison was found inside. Was this one of the poisons stolen from your store? It was. The Strangler. The one pod um, was trying to get paid to say he did. And used to strike down the most noble child the gods ever put on this good earth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> trying to trying to get the jury to side with him. I will hurt you for this. Oh my god. I think you are safe and happy. And your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth. And you'll know the debt is paid. Your own brother said this to you. You suck that bad. I confronted him about his plans to put Joffrey on the front lines. As it turned out, when the attack came, Joff insisted on remaining at the battlements. He believed his presence would inspire the troops. <laughs> Tyrion said, and you will know that- Tyrion should let the whole damn kingdom fall that day. <laughs> you know. know what I mean? Just to be paid like he this. He's been keeping whores in the Tower of the Hand. I asked him to confine his salacious acts to the brothel where such behavior belongs. He wasn't pleased. Jamie looks like he's calling Cap or something. He said, perhaps you should speak more softly to me then. Monsters are dangerous, and just now kings are dying like flies. And he said this to you at a meeting of the small council. After we received word of Rob Stark's death, he didn't seem gladdened by the news. Perhaps his marriage to Sansa Stark had made him more sympathetic to the Northern cause. <laughs> So? <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed in you, Varys. I asked the witness one question. One. You once said that without me, the city would have faced certain defeat. You said the histories would never mention me, but you would not forget. Have you forgotten, Lord Varys? Sadly, my lord, I never forget a thing. What did he do to Varys, though? Cause that meant like, no, I'm getting you back for something though. No, I feel like Varys just kind of is like, I'm doing my own thing. He has to play the game. He just has to do what he has to do. Yeah. Told the bells in an hour's time. Clear the court. That wasn't anything. Like, what was that? This is going to recess? What's Jamie about to do? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I've condemned your own son to death. I've condemned no one. The trial is not over. 
This isn't a trial, it's a farce. Cersei has manipulated everything, and you know it. I know nothing of the sort. You've always hated Tyrion. He killed his king. As did I. Oh. Do you know the last order the Mad King gave me? To bring him your head. I saved your life so you could murder my brother. It won't be murder, it'll be justice. Justice? I'm performing my sworn duty as Hand of the King. If Tyrion is found guilty, he will be punished accordingly. He'll be executed. No, he'll be punished accordingly. Worse than executed. As you said, family is what lives on. All that lives on. You told me about a dynasty that would last a thousand years. What happens to your dynasty when Tyrion dies? I'm a king's guard, forbidden by oath to carry on the family line. I'm well aware of your oath. What happens to your name? Who carries the lion banner into future battles? Your nephews? Lancel Lannister? <laughs> Others whose names you don't even remember. What happens to my dynasty if I spare the life of my grandson's killer? It survives through me. I'll leave the king's guard. I'll take my place as your son and heir if you let Tyrion live. Wow, oh. he's gonna give Jamie what he needs. Oh, wow. When the testimony is concluded and the guilty verdict rendered, Tyrion will be given the chance to speak. He'll plead for mercy. I'll allow him to join the Night's Watch. In three days' time, he'll depart for Castle Black and live out his days of the war. You'll remove your white cloak immediately. You will leave King's Landing to assume your rightful place at Casterly Rock. You will marry a suitable woman and father children named Lannister. And you'll never turn your back on your family again. You have my word. And you have mine. Wow. So he's going to get away from Cersei by force, basically. His dad's going to force that relationship to be done. But yeah. it seems like kind of done in a way. He wanted to be in the King's Guard just to be with Cersei. Right. So Jamie's like risking a lot for this. going well, is it? You're going to be found guilty. Oh, you think so? And when you are, you need to enter a formal plea for mercy and ask to be sent to the wall. Father's agreed to it. He'll spare your life and allow you to join the Night's Watch. Ned Stark was promised the same thing, and we both know how that turned out. Oh my gosh. Joffrey, he'll keep his word. How do you know? Right. Because there's value in keeping your word and being stable. Do you trust me? Keep your mouth shut. No more outbursts. <laughs> This will all be over soon. It's going to be weird on the wall for him. But he didn't do it, so I wouldn't want to. You know, I don't want to be known as that. Yeah. Hell, I might. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe for Joffrey. Might get some clout. <laughs> Not Joffrey's lawyer. You might be Lord Commander. Oh, wait, <laughs> <its> next witness. <gasps> oh, it's Shay. I just seen a ghost. Man, I thought the... she left for real. I thought they said they seen her leave. Come on, Shay. You know the right thing. She might be forced, though. I don't right. know. Shay. Do you swear by all the gods <laughs> that your testimony will be true and honest? I swear it. Do you know this man? Yes. Tyrion Lannister. Now how do you know him? AKA I your lion. To his wife, Lady Sansa. This man stands accused of murdering King Joffrey. What do you know of this? I know that he's guilty. He and Sansa planned it together. Silence! Continue. Yeah, she's compromised. She wanted revenge for her father, her mother, her brother. She blamed their deaths on the king. Tyrion was happy to help. He hated Joffrey. Look at him. He hated the queen. He stole poison from the Grand Mesa's chamber to put in Joffrey's wine. Why would he reveal such plans to his wife's maid? I wasn't just her maid. Stop, girl. Oh my Shut god, they're mouth. sinking on bro. I was his whore. Oh, oh and then she referred no. to herself as that. You said you were his... His whore. <laughs> Why do you make her repeat that? How did you come to <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> He told me. When Tyrion arrived at the camp, he sent one of his cutthroats into our tent. He broke the knight's arm and brought me to Lord Tyrion. You belong to me now, he said. I'd kill her. That was like in the tent, bro. Like, mm. You said some stuff like that too, girl. And did you? Did I what? Fuck him like it was his last night in this room. Why? <laughs> He's such a pervert, bro. You have to over here. I did everything he wanted. Whatever he told me to do to him. Whatever he felt like doing to me. Do you think this is breaking him? Yeah. I was his property. Lies. He ordered me to call him my lion, so I did. I'm so mad at her. He raised my hands and said, I am yours and you are mine. She was really crying when he made her leave. Like, she, please don't. I am a whore. Remember? That was before he married Sansa. After that, all he wanted was her. But she wouldn't let him in her bed. So he promised to kill King Joffrey for her. Oh my gosh. Father, I wish to confess. Is he about to confess out of duress? Oh my god. You wish to confess? I saved you. I saved this city. All your worthless lives. You hear the music? I should have let 
Let us kill you all. Do you wish to confess? I'm guilty. Guilty. Is that what you want to hear? You admit you poisoned the king. No. Of that I'm innocent. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh. Basically his whole life. I've been on trial for that my entire life. Nah, if he was more sleazy, he wouldn't be in trouble. Say in your defense. Nothing but this. I did not kill Joffrey, but I wish that I had. Watching your vicious bastard die gave me more relief than a thousand lying whores. Wow. I wish I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. Oh. I would gladly give my life. Holy crap, crap, dude. Oh, no. Sir Marin. Dude, Jamie's probably so frustrated. I will not give my life for Joffrey's murder, and I know I'll get no justice here, so I will let the gods decide my fate. I demand a trial <gasps> by combat. Let's go. Who's he gonna fight? You Tywin? know who he's gonna. You, uh, yeah, who's he gonna fight? <laughs> Tywin. But I know who's gonna fight for him. Jamie? No, Jamie's left-handed. Bron. Oh yeah. Bron's gonna be like, hello, my lord. How much? <laughs> Couple gold shillings you got there, my lord. That was crazy. And the music. Damn. This music gives me chills. All right, guys. That was the laws of gods and men. One of the best episodes by far. I mean, when it comes to the political drama, the theater, oh my God. that was about as good as it gets, man. Tyrion basically, finally, after, since we've been watching this show that's been building up and he right. finally just let the cat out of the bag. He told the world how he felt. He probably feels so relieved. He probably feels so relieved in the moment that if death is what's to come, it's worth it. Right. That right. was so, that was the most powerful thing in Game of Thrones I've seen so far, just because he said, I'm I I'm on trial, but not because I killed Joffrey, but I'm on trial for being a dwarf. And to I, me, that just like, oh my god. I really do think that if he wasn't like just because he's a if he was a dwarf, but if he was like if he was like with the cause more, dude, I don't think that'd be an issue. I genuinely don't. But do I think it brings embarrassment to the family that he's a dwarf right. from their perspective? A hundred percent. So I don't disagree with this statement. But I think it also Tyrion, killed the mother. So. Well, Tyrion rocks to his own beat, right? And people yeah. know that. So, but no, I think he's hundred percent right. I mean, he is on trial for being a dwarf. Like, I get what he's saying. There's truth to that. He hundred percent got set up, though. Yeah, he that did. trial was so rigged. A hundred percent. Let's start in the beginning, though, man. So the first thing that we saw was Theon, the Theon stuff. Yeah, Theon. So basically, man, even when rescue came for Theon, the man ran back in his cage. Literally ran back in his cage like a beat dog. So. Theon is so psychologically broken that even his sister in the end decided that he's just not alive anymore. Like right. that vessel of she a can't human. Help him. That's not that's not my brother, man. My brother's been gone a long time. So I thought that was really powerful, man. I was really pumped and excited for that rescue. It turned out to just be like a small little scene in the show that went by really fast. And really what it shows is that Ramsey is gonna be a problem, man. I thought right. that I thought she was about to make a power move and go take this character out. And I thought maybe like the building up of him was to just show how powerful she right. could be. Turns out, man, not at all. Theon but is whipped and What gone. does that say about that? The Greyjoys, though, like kind of like, you know how Stannis, when he's dropping them slugs, he brings Balon Greyjoy into it as like someone who's a threat. But to me, it doesn't really seem like they're too too much of a threat. That was supposed to be the best warriors. And Ramsey, Ramsey Snow, Snow Bolton made him look like a joke. Well, I mean, it's circumstantial, though. I mean, she didn't take, like, the whole entire... She took she the had, best she, men. She, yeah, she took the best men, but she didn't have a lot. I don't know, man. 50, yeah, 50 of them. Yeah. The odds were against her, but I, I see what you're saying. But a lot of this is not necessarily... In my mind, it's not like... Well, you know, the Hound said it best, actually. He goes, you know, they didn't win because of the skill or the blah, blah, blah. He said it straight up. What, what wins in this is a big shield and a big sword. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what he's saying. So, basically, I just think that, you know, even, like, with the Tullys, right? They're undefeated basically because you can't make it to them because of geography you mean you don't mean the tollies you mean the people in the veil yeah in the veil i mean yeah, yeah not the tollies, the, the, veil, errands. Yeah, the errands yeah um you can't get to them man the geography just don't allow you to do it so a lot of it is just luck you know like right that but was, hall was kind of the same way though remember like little finger is given heron hall because heron hall was that town like no one could no one wanted yeah but then the, then he here he is getting somewhere that's kind of unconquerable too like yeah he's given it in a different way so it seems like kind of like they're low-key like you know crapping on him yeah but he's know. getting he wants that it's weird yeah. yeah i got i got theories about i had theories in the middle of the episode guys um you know i really 
I don't even remember what that theory was, but whatever. When when I was hitting my head in the episode, man, I'm gonna go back and watch it. I'll explain on that later. Um, I guess we could talk about Daenerys. Uh, now that she's you know got her her Mirren, she's finally answering for all the things like leading up to it, which is like getting all those slaves crucified, and now like she has 212 like issues to deal with, and she's just sitting there taking them one by one. But let's see how far that takes her because. Um, it's only a matter of time before like she has to do something drastic with all this stuff that she's like done to get here. It's very complicated over on her side because the show is basically saying like we understand that you have some big some big bottom line principle, right? And you know, these are slave cities, they have slaves, so therefore they're all evil and they must die, right? And I guess the show is sort of thinking like that's just their culture and that's just really lazy thinking. It's just lazy to think that like someone with no perspective of the history and the culture can come in and just decide from an outsider's perspective, like what's best for these people. Right. And I'm not saying that she's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like I, even during the middle of that scene, I agreed with Daenerys. I took her side in that one because dude's sitting there begging for his father. But it's like at the same time, man, like I understand that your dad's not the one who personally made the decision and ruled everyone. But at the same time. He was complicit in it, and I understand that he just didn't want to be the one hung up on the cross. But dude, at some freaking point, something's got to give, man. Right. You can't hang kids, and if a couple, and if you, and if a bunch of dudes have to get hung up to learn that lesson, and you might think it sucks because that was your dad, and he was just doing what he had to do, then man, that's just called life, bro. That's called reality. That right. happens to every society. Every society that commits evil has to answer for it on some level or another, and it's not always fair, bro. But that's just reality, and. I think Daenerys is just starting to realize, though, that reality is not so black and white. Right. It's going to be very complicated. And, like, you know, you saw it come up with the dragons. I'm actually really surprised and impressed by the show because the show could be very lazy and the show could just not show the downside of that. But it didn't. It showed right. that these dragons are a freaking problem. Like, to your average person, even the people who support the cause, it's not like just because you put a Targaryen flag and shove it up your butt and wave it around in the wind, dude. It doesn't mean that all your problems are just going to go away. Right. I mean, those dragons, that fire will still they burn still, your house and down. And they still need to eat. They still need to live. They're big beings. You can't... How are you going to contain them? I guess we're going to find out more throughout the season. So, you know, the thing about the Daenerys thing is, like, that's just the human condition, man. Like, that's why no one can come in and just decide that you know right from wrong. Even though it's got its issues, man, that's why, like, democracy, a republic of some sort, has to be the answer. Because well, there's one different human, rights and wrongs. Yeah, like there are a lot of different uh, you, there's different perspectives for sure. I mean, I think I think there's right and there's wrong, you know. I think that But at the what end of the we day, think is right and what maybe you think is right is not the same thing. Right, exactly. And it's just complicated. Let's talk about the Iron Bank cuz I thought that was very interesting. Right. So the Iron Bank is somewhere. I don't really know what the shadows are that that be there, right? right. But the Iron Bank is more powerful than everything in the show. I and mean, you and even they Sandus who would never sit down anyone knew his place when it came to them. You saw that. They little they sunned him. Like they little boyed yeah, him really. They yeah. were like like they dismissed him. They were mocking towards him. They They basically when he comes up with all these titles like this is my blah blah blah, they basically were like, nah man, that's just not how it is. Like you think that's how it is, but we're not going to sit here and play with these smoke blown up your butt by Melisandre. It's kind of hard this to... This is the truth. Sorry to interrupt you, sweetie. It's hard to understand because it's basically like... The Iron Bank is basically like the Federal Reserve. But, like, who runs the Federal Reserve? Like, those know. people aren't elected. You know what I'm saying? Like, the people, the people on Earth who control the money, the economies... These are faceless people. These are faceless people who don't have to answer to anyone at all. Like, they don't get involved with wars. They don't get mentioned in the media. You can't infiltrate them with a youtube video they're right. just faceless shadows right. you need them but they don't need you in a sense yeah, yeah i mean they it's don't just need you they're just helping you out i don't know exactly what is behind them but it's something it's weird man it, it just goes to show more about, to expand about just the power structures in society and i, I mean it opens and, up a whole like dynamic though because you we just thought the lannisters were where the gold at we thought the tyrells were where it's at but no, it's really the Iron Bank of Bravos. Well, it turns out there's all these different wars brewing, and another war that's brewing, another war that's brewing is a financial war. Right, right. And now right. we actually assign like a face to it, even though like there's no specific face for the Iron Bank, but we at least got to see the Iron Bank. Right. Right. So it's interesting, man. It really adds a whole lot of. It's so suspicious. And you know what else I think it distracts us from? Winter. That's what I think. Yeah, it does. It really does. I think it's like, let's throw this in there because y'all forgot about winter, but let's y'all forgot about it even more because now we're worried about money. Right. So y'all y'all thought you were worried about winter. No, you're not. Yeah. You're not. You can imagine the bank's so powerful that they would know about winter and well, maybe, maybe that's do. why, and maybe well, that's why they're not giving Santa's money. Because well, I think they, they end that, up do giving Santa's money because Well, I, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. They did give him the money. Yeah. Yeah, so Basically, 
he's getting that money to go get the cell swords cell swords so he is gonna come in contact with daenerys maybe because that's dario who he's gonna try to buy i don't understand the motivations of this bank why would no, they give the any type of funding it? why would they give any type of funding to stannis brathian's claim knowing that the Lannisters owe them so much money. You would think they would want to protect the Lannisters in hopes of getting their I money feel back. Like, I feel like that's the mystery we have, and I feel like that's something like that is going to build. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we just got introduced to it, right. so not to get too off topic. Um. But then, with that being said, um, we got into the trial, which was like, let's be real, that trial was absolutely like uh, of season four. This is my favorite scene. I mean, guys, I've watched four. I've watched episodes of Judge Judy ain't been that good. Like I'm no, telling heck you, no, heck nah. no. That was absolutely insane. Um, Cersei set everything up, basically, like, I, 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 maybe even Tywin. I, Tywin had to be part of it, right? Because he said... I don't know. I don't understand when why. When he said the mercy thing, I think he, I think they knew Shay, that Shay was going to shake him. I think they knew. Because they said, just have him show mercy, and then they got under his skin immediately. Well, it was almost like, like Shay was just like the final little piece of ammo that Cersei was waiting on. I don't know that Tywin necessarily has anything to do with it, but I can definitely because like when the show was going down, I thought I kept seeing the camera pan to Cersei as if like right. I mean, that, I mean, like, yeah, I get that too. But Tywin's the one that said right before that maybe hey, it was Tywin show- and Cersei because they both not interrupt you, sweetie, but they both pointed her out at, at the, the wedding. wedding. Yes, exactly, and that's so, when she was supposed to disappear. Right, okay. and they were cons- okay. So somehow in another shake out in the mix, like uh, they thought Bronn said he, she was gone. So did Podrick. They said she was gone. They thought what they thought of her going away was not real so somehow she got in touch with this like she's she's basically what did you say she's compromised absolutely and you can tell because she basically made up all these lies like here's the big question though and it might be very obvious watching this episode back but as of right now man i I don't know so the big question is does cersei wholeheartedly believe that Tyrion's guilty or does she just hate Tyrion so bad that she's like an opportunist i think she just hates him so bad she's an opportunist because i think tywin hates him so bad he's an opportunist but cersei might genuinely think that he did it i think cersei is just like i think cersei knows that he didn't do it because even jamie like her lover whatever came and said dude she didn't do it and i think that she just like wants to blame somebody. She has no one to blame. And like when Tyrion said that thing about the daughter, like that really hurt her feelings. And like that's two of her three kids now. Well, you, know you say that she just wants to blame someone. I mean, someone's to blame. Someone killed him. And if you're Cersei, like I can understand like having doubts, but maybe your number one suspect would be Tyrion. Right. Because if you're, I mean, if your dying son's pointing to somebody and that's your point of view, maybe that's what you see. And maybe that's your truth. Like maybe that's just what you believe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I forgot about Bless the whole. You. Yeah, thank you. I forgot about the whole fact that yeah, I forgot about that whole thing because Joffrey ultimately is the one who put him on trial while pointing at him. So mm. crazy so, episode, man. I, you know, I wanted to talk about Tyrion's dialogue though in it. Like, I just want to talk about just like how he really did so much for everyone. Like you said it in the episode. You said he literally did all this for like everyone to survive for them to just want him to die you know what i'm saying yeah he should have let them all just burn that right. day he should have ended the corruption and the corruption came full circle in trial when it really came down to it man as a society there's a lot of things you could ask for as a society right but i could imagine one of the most basic things that would really really like you know one of those basic things you would need was a fair trial i mean you gotta have some type of fair trial like when you read history books and you hear about the most corrupt societies like that's the things you think about was the fact that there was no fair trials and This one was set up from the jump. He had no one to call upon. They didn't even, like, everyone, he either told him to go, which is Podrick, or they're just gone, Sansa. And what do you do if you're Tyrion? Like, I guess you do, the only thing you can do is trial by combat. And I guess if if you're treated so unfairly where you have no say, nothing, just fight it off. Do what you can. Maybe Bronn will help him. Hopefully Bronn hasn't ran off too far. I think last thing thing we saw him, it was still... Well, that's well, what I'm saying. But I, then Bron didn't go anywhere. He sent Podrick off. I don't know. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll He's see. still been fighting with Jamie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Last time we saw him, he was just training Jamie up. So um, I really thought Tyrion's expressions of himself, like, I didn't kill him, but I wish I had. The truth is, I wish I had killed every single one of y'all. He basically, he said, you, you, all of you guys suck. Everyone, everyone at this trial knows good and well that even if I did kill that little rat, you should set me free because I did this world a favor. I like, did the realm a favor by killing right. anyone who killed that rat. The only reason he was not dead was because none of you guys had the balls or the right. courage to actually do it. Like, I'm the only person who had the courage to help us, and you guys are going to put me on trial for it. And the king's not even here, but you're just so freaking whipped in your mind, and you're so gone mentally that even though the dude's 
freaking dead, you're still answering to him, low key. Right. And, and like that Varus thing was confusing though. I just want to. Well, Varus Varus serves you, but, the round, baby right. serves the round. He's said that. So Varus has two choices. Varus can rock can rock can rock things up, and he can say, "Hey, Tyrion is innocent." But by doing that, he has to point out you can't just say, "Hey, Tyrion's innocent." Now I'm gonna go home and chill. If he says Tyrion's innocent, he's also that's saying. His head. Well, he's also saying not only is Tyrion innocent, but you guys are all a bunch of liars. Right, that's his right. head. And if he it can't comes do down that. So wow, yeah. he doesn't want any. He doesn't want the. He doesn't want the realm to be shaken. Like there's already so much going wrong with the realm that he just feels like if there's a lack of faith, like just in leadership, man. Like yeah, I mean, you get what I'm trying to say. You guys get what I'm saying. And I just think that that's something that he wasn't willing to risk, even though he had so much respect for. I think deep down, he probably really loved and honored Tyrion for what he did because he is so about the mm -hmm. realm. But at the same time, he understands, bro, I'm a soldier just like you. Yeah. And unfortunately, you're just caught up, man. You made bad moves. And this is your this is just how you are. And I'm not going to compromise myself for right. a man who's already going to be trialed as guilty. I mean, it doesn't matter what I, I say. I have a question for you real quick. Do you what do you think about um, you know how Varys and Littlefinger have arguably the best banter in the whole in the whole like series, right? What do you I mean? What other you, than the fact that Littlefinger gets on my damn nerves when he talks. Hello, no, no, no. Stop. Now that we know how much of a mastermind he is, what do you think of like him and Varys' dynamic now? Like, do you think Varys knew the whole time? Well, do you think Varys has ideas? Do you think, what do you think? Because I know I, Varys tried to shut him down at the source. To be honest, I don't really think anything. I don't really know. But I mean, I guess the obvious thing is to point out the obvious. I mean, the obvious thing is maybe Varys doesn't know how powerful he is. Maybe no, he Varys does. Remember, does he know. told Elena he's yeah, got to go. But not quite how powerful he is, though. Right. Or maybe he doesn't know all that. But like I was saying, but maybe he does know how powerful he is. And maybe that's something that we haven't been privy to yet. Maybe, maybe Varys is significantly more powerful than Littlefinger. And we just right. don't know. Maybe and Varys was the ones, maybe what's good for the realm was the war. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he had a lot to do with it. What maybe, about that sorcerer he had? Remember he had that guy that he shipped and then we don't know anything else about it. That was a little plot line that just completely they forgot disappeared. About or yeah, that or was it's going to bite us in like a later season. Yeah. They shipped him in. Yeah. yeah, that was weird as hell. I completely yeah, forgot like, about that. And that's what I'm thinking. Like when I saw Varys do all this stuff, I'm like, Varys just has this this mind and it's kind of like Khaleesi, you know, like he has all this stuff going through his head that we just don't know. And we're never going to know until it happens. That's what I'm thinking. I'm really hoping by the end of this, man, that we really do got we get finality to these characters because the show so far has given me the vibe that we're low-key sitting there looking at this whole show we're paying attention to the places and the characters but if you really knew you would understand that this is this is all about little finger so I feel maybe like this is a little a bunch finger of distractions show. i feel like there's just so many distractions for something bigger at play and we just don't know what said thing is we always uh, assumed the bigger thing at play was going to be the war in the north against the, the white winter Walkers. yeah the winter. maybe so maybe not uh, maybe that's just a little something for something else. I don't know, man. It'd be really hard to actually try to make moves in this world because it's hard enough trying to predict it when you're sitting there watching it multiple times. Oh my gosh. Like when I'm editing, I'm just finding out. So I feel like I'm a detective. I find out all these small things, but then these small things also are there to throw me off because I'm still a detective. It's like you're loot hunting in Assassin's Creed or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting thrown off, guys. I'm getting thrown off my trail at every instance because I'm mostly wrong. <laughs> like yeah. I'm mostly wrong about most things. So, <laughs> guys, it's been the Octobers. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, go hit us up on Patreon if you guys just want to try something different. We do just the uh, uncut raw reactions over there if you guys aren't sure. And I think that you can go look for free if you guys aren't really sure what Patreon is. So, um, we're going to be back with more Game of Thrones because this show is this awesome. Season is How many more episodes do we got? That was episode six. Four more. So, we have four more this episode. <sighs> Something's got to give, man. We'll see you all in the next one.